In a wave of popular tweets, a top Belarusian blogger shared his experience of four trips to the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Don't believe the rumors, believe the facts of those who were there. Fact 1. When the wind blows from the sarcophagus. First, a clarification. Everyone knows about the 10 and 30 10 and 30 kilometer security perimeter around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. However, in fact, the 30 is much wider, in some places more than twice as wide. To the west, for example, it stretches for almost 90 kilometers. The name 30 kilometer zone is very conventional. Unlike the 10, the 30 is practically clean. In general, almost the norm in terms of exposure background. But you cannot live there all the land is contaminated with radionuclides. Specifically, in the town of Chernobyl, 12 kilometers from the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the radiation background does not exceed that of Kiev or Moscow, 10 to 15 micro Rentgen per hour. In Pripyat, 3 kilometers from the plant, the average background is 50 to 80 micro Rentgen per hour. This is absolutely safe for a short-term stay, explains the stalker. But the closer to the nuclear power plant, the more phoned up it gets. Near the unfinished power units 5 and 6, the dosimeter shows in the air under 90 mur h but on the grass the level is noticeably higher. At the CHNPP observation deck there are already about 300 to 400 mur h with the wind blowing towards the plant. If the air flows from the side of the sarcophagus, the background here can be up to 600 to 800 mur slash hour. Compare, during an air flight at cruising altitude, the radioactive background is on average 100 to 150 micro Rentgen per hour, this is 10 times higher than the usual norm. And sometimes dosimeters scare with even higher values up to 350 micro Rentgen per hour, i.e. practically as near the Chernobyl sarcophagus. Does this mean it is dangerous to fly? Not at all, unless of course you live in the sky. Fact 2. Nobody's dead city. In the western part of the zone is almost no one knows the dead town of Paleskoy. Stalkers get here rarely, the city is too far from the usual routes. A highway runs through Paleskoy, but it is strictly forbidden for passengers to get out of the car. After the accident they wanted to make Paleskoy a model town near the contamination perimeter, for which purpose something was built and developed there even after the accident. The Soviets hid the fact that in Paleskoy there was in fact colossal soil contamination with cesium-137. As the blogger explains the widely known story of the urgent evacuation of Chernobyl and Pripyat created a myth, as if all residents of the zone were evacuated in the first days after the explosion of Unit 4. In fact, there are villages and entire towns in the zone that were not evacuated in the first days or even in the first years after the accident. The town of Paleskoy was only evicted in the early 1990s seven years after the accident and two years after the end of the USSR. Until that time, people continued to live in the contaminated zone. Fact 3, Prepute, don't believe the popular photos. Many people still confuse Chernobyl and Prepute, notes the blogger. So it's worth considering that most Chernobyl photos are actually taken exactly in Pripyat. This is a staged photo, there were no dolls on the street and children's gas masks were not even unpacked on April 26, 1986, journalists did this. Some even make such productions, which they pass off as photos of an abandoned untouched city, as if children on April 26, 1986 had nothing better to do than to put dolls in their beds. The point of no return prepute passed around the year 2000. At that time, a study of the city was conducted, which showed that these houses could never be lived in irreversible changes in the structures had begun due to non-compliance with the mode of operation. The average age of the residents of Pripyat was 26 years old, it was a city of and for young people. And it is still felt there. Absolutely all public buildings, including schools and police, have glass doors and huge panoramic windows. Among the surrounding villages, Pripyat looked like a city from the future. Fact 4, even now Pripyat is not a completely dead city. Until 1998, the pool Azure worked in Pripyat for employees of the zone, and now works Pripyat special laundry, where they wash contaminated clothes. It looks just like the laundry in the game Estay LKR. The Call of Pripyat In the fall of 1986, disinfectors went around Pripyat's houses. 
They opened doors and threw full refrigerators out of windows to prevent an epidemic. Somewhat later, furniture also flew into the windows it was thrown directly into the bodies of cars and taken to the burial grounds. The most valuable things, pianos, household appliances, were taken away to Rainbow Store in the center of the city, it was alarmed, during almost all 1990s. Now the store is open, and no one wants things, they were destroyed by time. There's also the fact that the entire Chernobyl zone has been cleaned out by looters. Everything is broken, smashed and plundered, even the tiles were peeled off in the 90s. There are absolute fairy tales, rumors that somewhere in Pripyat, there are apartments where everything is like in 1986. Fact 5, Scary Place, Don't Go There. The most terrible place in Pripyat was and still is the basement of MSCH 126, a hospital where firefighters and plant workers were taken in the first hours after the accident. The clothes and equipment of the firefighters, which absorbed cesium, strontium, plutonium, and americium from the nuclear fire, were taken to the basement of the hospital. In places on the floor there shines a background of 1 to 2 x-rays per hour, which is 100 to 200,000 times higher than the norm. Don't go there, don't do that. The author himself and other knowledgeable people point out that the main entrance to the basement is now backfilled, but there are still opportunities to get in by other risky means. Despite the fact that Pripyat is relatively clean now, there are still several heavily contaminated places in the city. First, there's the amusement park site and those very autodrome cars, the helicopters that flew to extinguish the fire over Block Ford landed next to them. Secondly, this is the staircase that leads from Café Pripyat to the embankment. During the decontamination of the city, water flowed down the stairs and a lot of radioactive crap piled up between the steps. And thirdly, there's this thing called the death bucket, which was used to disassemble the nuclear debris. Another big background on the territory of the Pripyat plant Jupiter, they're just past the western trace, and nobody properly decontaminated the plant. As Pripyatians say, the last movie in Prometheus was a Belarusian movie, Flight to the Land of Monsters, in which people put on gas masks and escaped from unknown weapons of mass destruction. Fact 6, Chernobyl, Soviet Selpo and Hostel with Wi-Fi. Unlike Polsky or Pripyat, the town of Chernobyl, which gave its name to the nuclear plant, both lives and works. Now there is no civilian population in Chernobyl, but there are many workers of the exclusion zone, they live in the city on a rotational basis in hostels. The hostels are housed in former residential buildings. There is water, electricity, and heating. The furniture inside is all local, from pre-vacation times, often brought from Pripyat. This is what the building that used to be the dormitory for the workers who were building the new sarcophagus looks like. The life of Chernobyl workers is quite modest. Two people live in each of the rooms of a small three-room apartment. All things are pre-war, Soviet, except for the obligatory water filter and a polyethylene tablecloth that does not retain dust. Externally, Chernobyl resembles an ordinary provincial Ukrainian town, there are absolutely peaceful and quiet courtyards left over from pre-war life. The exception is that Chernobyl is very clean and something is constantly being swept, increased requirements for radiation safety. There are several quite ordinary stores in Chernobyl, which somewhat resemble a Soviet Selpo. Also in 2017, a pretty decent hostel with Wi-Fi opened in Chernobyl, no joke. However, only those who have a permit to visit the exclusion zone can stay there. There are several cafes in town, both active and abandoned. One of the working ones has sleeping quarters on the second floor. And this is how the abandoned Chernobyl bar palsy looks like, they don't take tourists there. Fact 7, Zone, Mutant Fish and Radioactive Mushrooms. Speaking of nuclear catering. Right at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant there is a very good canteen. Lunch there are mostly plant workers, and the rare tourists, too. To get into the canteen, you have to go through a special frame, which will not let you inside in case there are radioactive particles on your clothes. And the food in the canteen is very nourishing and tasty. There are giant catfish in the cooling pond at Chernobyl, this is no joke. Catfish reach several meters in length due to the fact that no one catches them, but on the contrary, periodically feeds them from the bridge with a loaf. Catfish see and know the tourists and swim up to ask for food. 
Other connoisseurs of the area, however, claim that catfish ignore the loaf and instead eat bread, huge, up to half a meter, redfin and bream. The internet is very fond of telling stories as if they were mutant fish. In fact, the common catfish is the largest purely freshwater fish in Europe. Its average length is 1.3 to 1.6 meters, but some specimens in certain conditions grow to almost 3 meters. A half meter length of redfin is also within the norm. In general, there are a lot of animals in the Chernobyl zone, Prowalski's horses, wild boars, wolves, foxes, hares and so on that were brought there live well. In the short lifespan of an animal, radiation does not manage to do any significant harm to it. The redwood forest, which is in the game, Stalker. Clear sky is not a fairy tale, but a completely real object. The forest was near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant and turned red in the first hours after the accident, the needles quickly turn red and die from high radiation fields. With the beginning of work on the liquidation of the consequences of the accident, it was decided to destroy the red forest, or rather to bury it in the ground in order to reduce the lateral shooting through the road with radionuclides when approaching Pripyat. In 1987-88, liquidators cut the wood with chainsaws and put it in trenches. Now there is nothing at the place of the red forest, only tall grass grows. Here is my picture of these places, a few dry trees in the background are the remnants of that very redwood forest. When you step on the side of the road from a clean road, the radiation background increases tenfold, and a little farther, hundreds of times. The Dugga radar station is one of the most interesting sites in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. In the 80s, foreign journalists often came to the zone and could not help but see the huge antennas above the forest. When they asked what it was, a KGB officer, who was always present in any group, would answer, and this is our unfinished hotel. The antennas of the ark are on a small hill, and next to it there is a low place where the water flows down. And here you can clearly see what the radiation is, the mushrooms growing in the lowlands have just some prohibitive level of activity. In fact, these are not mushrooms, but radioactive wastes. It is worth explaining that mushrooms have the highest ability to accumulate radiation of all that grows on the ground. And some of their species, even with a normal background of soil, can shine above the permissible level. But not necessarily such mushrooms are dangerous to health. On the contrary, some innocent things, far from Chernobyl, which surround us every day, can be dangerous. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.